Oh, this is this just wrong. What you did to them was wrong. Look at his wrong. face! Did you see the Ryan's face? Jesus. This is why you make videos on how to play tank. Nice. Dude, what you did to them was so wrong. What's going on, everybody? It's Frito here for your Overwatch, and I'm happy to finally be bringing you the complete Reinhardt 2.0 Mastery Guide today. Ryan underwent a host of reworks to how he plays, and now he's in the most skillful and challenging version yet. Overall, he plays a lot faster than older versions, with less shield health, but faster movement, and more control with the steadfast buff. And with shield health lower for all tanks, there's more chances for Ryan to set up better engagements than his opposing tank, there's a skill gap there, or carry team fights outright with Earthshatter. First, let's discuss a quick overview of the playstyle of Reinhardt and when you do and don't want to pick him. He's a carry tank, which I know is often a controversial word, but for the purposes of our content, the term carry means a hero that excels when resources are put into them as opposed to other tanks like Orisa who are more about setting up teammates. They're more supportive. Ryan does a bit of that too, but it's harder to have a pure supportive playstyle with him. So if you lack an off tank or main healer, you may have to consider swapping Ryan, but that's something we'll discuss later on. In short, on Rhine, you have one of the most powerful jobs in the game with a huge percentage of the win resting in your hands. No pressure, of course, but assuming you have the right pieces in your team comp, let's proceed and start with the most fundamental. First thing you wanna go about mastering is your mechanics. The first step to improving this is to increase your sensitivity. It's very important as Reinhardt that you're able to quickly turn when you need to. You're going to have to search up a video on EDPI if you don't know what that means. I play on 1600 with two in-game sensitivity. I like that for all the characters I play. But you'll notice if we drop this by a quarter, I'm not going to be able to turn around nearly as much. So if you are at a lower sensitivity, you might not be getting the most out of Reinhardt because especially when we talk about the different moves I'm going to prescribe you want to do, you're not gonna be able to do them if your sense is too low. So it needs to be high enough for you to be able to turn and get all of your Reinhardt things going. Turn speed unlocks everything Ryan does, but it's key to the first thing you need to learn, which is swinging that hammer. All melees in Overwatch have a lingering hitbox. So even when I'm playing Tracer, if you're fast enough, you actually can miss the melee, but move it towards the target and still connect, provided that it is at the end of the animation still. Now, Reinhardt's hammer has a very long animation, all the while with a lingering hitbox that we can move and manipulate. So because of this, even when our first swipes against a target miss, we are able to swing our hammer around and create almost a backswing effect, where the first swipe in the animation is automatic, but we can whip our aim the other direction while the hammer is lingering at our side to sort of create an extra swing, if that makes sense. And remember, it'll do damage at any point it makes contact. So if the target's behind you, you can reverse it, you can push it. Just remember that the hammer itself hangs at the side of your body. So don't focus at your crosshair. As you're swinging, think of the physical motion you're making and concentrate on turning that hammer, especially when it slows down and hangs at your side. That's where you can aim it the most because it moves the least. Getting good at this helps punish quick characters that otherwise would feel safe around or behind you. It's the difference between punishing that Tracer or Lucio buzzing around your death ball or forcing them away, if not outright getting the elimination on them. Hammer and Aim matters, folks. This is key. Don't knock it, and it's not as easy as it sounds. Other cute tips with the hammer that you're going to want to keep in mind is that Ryan's hammer applies a bit of knockback. All melees do this, actually, but it's a little bit more pronounced on Reinhardt. This can be important for all manner of things, just pushing enemies into danger, physically making space by knocking enemies out of the way so you and your team can get through. In the Reinhardt mirror, it matters far less now that they both have steadfast, but up against other tanks like when Winston's shield dancing and knocking him out of the bubble will make him much more vulnerable, or when you're trying to control a Zarya and punish her from over-aggressing, those hammer knockbacks are really key. Okay, next, we're going to talk about shield mechanics. You will walk slower when shielding. It's faster than it used to be, but it is slower than full-on walking. There's less of a penalty now, which is really important, but you are going to want to maximize your move speed as Ryan whenever possible, especially when it comes to dodging enemy abilities. And instead of retreating full-on with your shield like this, you want to employ what's called shield jumping, where I move faster in the air 
with the shield and I'm not getting that movement penalty that I get on the ground. So if I'm walking with the shield, I move this slow. Whereas if I jump backwards, I'm at the jump speed, which is far faster. And there's also an added benefit that you're able to not keep your shield up the whole time. So if I was like this up against the bots here that shoot, then I would begin taking damage this entire time. My shield health going down and down and down. To execute the shield jump, remember to move in the direction you wanna go, jump, but try to hit the shield in air. Because if you shield too early, you're not gonna get as much momentum and you'll be stuck short hopping. Another bit of shield tech that I think is really important is using your ability to lock your shield in place with your primary attack and then moving your camera to see where the heck your team is, right? Not really used at higher tiers because positioning and teamwork, it's a little bit more natural, but at lower tiers especially, you're going to want to use this ability a lot. And remember, higher sensitivity makes this easier. You just want to quickly gain information of where my team's at. You want to know, are we even ready to go? Because if we're not, then you shouldn't press W. Gaining that information as Ryan is like half of his play style. Just knowing where your team are, what their intentions are, improves your decision making to a huge degree. And a must know shield mechanic is that you can cancel the animation of your hammer swing with shield. So at any point during this animation, if I begin swinging, I can just cancel it in the middle, I can cancel it at the end, I can cancel it whenever I want to put my shields up. But what I cannot do is throw a fire strike and do the same thing. I have to wait the entire time. It's gonna be so important to blocking earth shatters and abilities. So fire strike does more damage, but hammer is a better ability to spam because you always can bring your shields back up. And our last quick tip is to remember to crouch after you earth shatter. Reason being, when you fire strike while standing up, the projectile comes out at a much higher angle and a lot of targets are lying on the floor. So if there's one target you want to focus out in the distance, that's fine. But what's far better is to crouch in front of the line of targets that you've just shattered to maximize the damage with fire strike. It's sort of like you are rolling a bowling ball down the lane. You don't want to throw it because you want it to hit everyone on the ground to max out how many connections you get. And while we're on fire strike tips, to increase your DPS, when you're focusing a target down and you've already connected your hammer, you can immediately animation cancel the end of your normal hammer swing to begin the fire strike animation. This is faster than waiting for the entire swing to finish. So just feel out when those crunchy hammers hit and start the fire strike immediately thereafter to increase how much burst damage you can do. Fire strike's a pretty massive projectile, but it moves very slow so most of the time you'll just be tossing it down lanes in order to build earth shatter you can see mano here being cheeky tossing it through a crack and then on his next fire strike he's watching the enemy diva's defense matrix really important that you don't toss fire strikes into off tanks abilities especially zarya so much so that if you see a bubble go up and you're about to fire strike throw it away whatever you do don't charge the enemy zarya with fire strike it's really easy to do not so bad if you chuck it into a dm but better still if you dodge those tanking abilities. Okay, now it's time to get a bit more complicated. It's been fundamental at this point. Now comes the start of the advanced sections of the video, Reinhardt's pin. Charging as Reinhardt is your big risk, big reward ability. It's the way you carry the mid fight, but it's also how you throw if you don't know what you're doing. You'll notice that the higher tiers of play, Reinhardt's almost never pin, unless it's a perfect opportunity, mainly because they respect the enemy Rhine and the enemy Rhine supports so much that the game of chicken between two Reinhardts usually equates to neither of them being willing to take the risk of potentially putting themselves out of position. In ranked though, I think you badly need to learn how to master this. Otherwise you're giving up your big carry potential. Pins get pickoffs, charge your ult, and manhandle the enemy frontline brawl in a way that carries the game. So you have to learn how to do this very well and learn how to disrespect the enemy Rhin enough and force him to play better or else you're just going to carry the game. So how do we go about doing this? A golden rule of using charge is that it's best to press it when the direction you're going leads you somewhere you wouldn't mind being anyway. The quick and easy way to explain this is anytime it's a short pin or you're pinning to safety, it's okay to press the button. So what this means, short pins good, long pins bad. For one, short pins are just easier to aim. With less time before you make your connection on the thing you're targeting, it's more likely that you can set it up cleanly. But also with less travel time, there is less chance for the opponent to sneak in an ability or a cooldown onto you with your shield down 
and kill you or your team. So as long as the enemy Rhine doesn't have Earth Shatter, if you're tracking ults properly, if you play the enemy Rhine on a corner and you can box him in, assuming you have enough health to survive, even if the pin doesn't connect, it's a good risk to take. Now you can make these risks even better when you learn how to frame the pin and read the animations of the enemy Rhine. So here, this Rhine jumps forward, losing all his momentum. Now he's on his shield, falling back down to the floor. I notice his health is low, meaning he's not going to W towards me, or I could just hammer swing on him and win, meaning pressing shift here is a very high percentage chance to connect, or at the very least, put me inside his whole team with full health and probably be able to swing and kill things anyway. Now notice, this is actually the max distance your target can be away from you for the pin to connect properly. The shape of Reinhardt's pin hitbox sort of looks like the front of a train, which is why if the Rhine was just a little bit more to the right off of my shoulder, he probably gets bobbled out of this, but because it just barely lands in the sweet spot, he gets suctioned into the pin and gets caught by it. And it's this interaction that makes this a little bit tricky sometimes. If you're not fast enough, or if it doesn't line up perfectly, the pin can get bobbled, which is partially why pro Rhines don't take the chance on it. But you can make this a lot easier for yourself if you only set up short distance pins on corners, which are just good risks to take. As long as you're not going to be too far out of the battle once you land where you're going, whether you get the kill or not on the thing you're trying to lane, it's a good risk to take because getting a full pickoff as a main tank is value that you don't expect to get. But if you reliably get it, you full on carry the game because you also do all the other tanky things that you do to keep your team alive. A few more examples of short pin reads. This example, same as the Havana one. The enemy Rhine has less health than me, is unlikely to aggress, and is walking into a frame right in the center of the choke with his Zarya by his side. So even if for some reason I don't pin the Rhine here, good chance I get the Zarya instead. And even if both of them miss, because I have more health, I'm closing the distance on them to swing and finish the fight anyway. So we saw a health advantage, an easy angle on the setup, and a destination we wouldn't mind being anyway. Make those three reads and press the button and cash in your free team fight win. Conversely, here's one where I don't take the bait on a short pin, because we also have to keep in mind the state of the whole fight. Yes, we sleep Ryan, but the enemy still has the Zarya bubble on him. Then we still has a bunch of cooldowns. We have a May wall. We have spam characters at the choke. I don't necessarily need to go put my face in the front of everything and chance dying. I'm on defense. So instead, I wait for the enemy tanks to peek their head out, go for the pin when they press into the choke, because even if I miss it, pinning here lands me on my side of the choke, whereas the first pin had a chance of putting me too close to the enemy when they still have all their cooldowns and be able to wreck me. Cooldown reading will get more complicated as the video goes on, but here's another simple one. A horrible Zarya bubble before Ryan can even swing at anything, which means they're not bailing this Ryan out from this pin. He takes an easy death. Best case scenario, he counterpins me there, but either way, he's dropping his shield, giving my team the opportunity to attack. So that's short pins, but what if I want to pin long distances, Frito? Well, the easy one that you can still get away with is the 180 pin, which you can use to do a 180 degree turn when you're too deep into the fight and don't mind retreating, pinning back towards your team. You can use this simply just to reposition when you can tell you're about to be overwhelmed, but if you get the mechanics down on it, you can make some magic happen Happen by scooping enemies back towards your team for easy focus fire or even exit picks on a fight. This 180 degree retreat pin has surprising effectiveness up against an enemy nano blade, in which case you have like two options. Your teammates are either all going to die to the nano blade, meaning you either have to W hard to try to frag the enemy faster than he can slice up your team, or you can attempt to pin backwards immediately towards your support line and nab the dragon blade before everybody dies. The 180 turn speed on this is very important. You can practice this even in the training range. Getting comfortable with the muscle memory of how to do this instantly is the ticket to catching your opponents off guard. And last, but certainly least, is the long pins. Okay, sometimes you can go for long pins and make them work, but I'd say it's more about reading the resources and the state of the fight than it is just setting it up. 
You still want to follow the other rule of being where you would like to be anyway, but you want to add on the context of, is it okay for me to potentially feed entirely and my team still win? Most of the time, that's not true, but in some cases, if it's a low percentage team fight anyway, or if the fight is broken up and chaotic enough that the enemy won't see it coming, that's when you can consider pinning longer distances. A good time to go for a long distance pin on the enemy Rhine is when a zoning ult is put onto him, whether it be a Diva Bomb or Deadeye, where he has to keep his shields up. You can give him a no-win situation by sending a pin at him while he can't really move quickly. Another instance that it can work is if you have a flank going on, like a Dragon Blade or a teammate death blossoming into the backline. Committing in in time with them diving in is a good way to add a bit more chaos into the mix if you time you landing into the fight along with them at the same time. Time. Otherwise, a major thing you can look out for is the enemy making mistakes, whether it be Ana using her cooldowns, McCree using stun, Zara using bubbles too early. Here, the enemy Ryan pins. So I know even if I miss, I'm not going to get pinned back. So there's little high damage threats that are just going to instantly do 500 damage to me, meaning that this is a really high percentage pin. And again, when we're cleaning up, just closing the distance, getting closer so I can swing the hammer finishes that fight. With more practice and experience, you develop a sense of this, of when it's okay to take these risks. I'd say the harder the point you're trying to take is, the less risks you want to take. Because those sections of maps, the harder they are to close out, the more pristine your play has to be. But if you're going to get a lot of shots to capture a point, maybe you would up your risk taking a bit because you aren't going to be as badly set back. So for example, early attacks close to your spawn where you have a respawn advantage would work that way, whereas you're more severely punished when you're fighting closer to the enemy's spawn. But truth is, most of the time, the enemy is going to be ready for you to drop your shield and pin in from Narnia. Everybody loves shooting tanks, so unless you really are catching the enemy off guard or it's worth the risk, like we've said, you want to avoid the long pins when possible. You, of course, can turn during the pin, but you only really get turn control when you're already so so deep that if it was that long of a pin to begin with, it was probably a mistake. So I advise you to set up the clean, shorter pins whenever possible that don't require you to adjust the movement of it much because really the control you have is so low that you're better off aiming it as if it's a straight missile rather than expecting to be able to adjust if you miss. Don't miss. The best way to aim it is to make sure that the target you're trying to hit will be inside your shoulders by the time you get to connecting with them. If for whatever reason there's a chance that's not going to be the case, it's not going to be a high percentage pin connection. Next up, Earth Shatter. We'll talk about landing them as well, but far more important is blocking them. If pins carry in the mid fight, blocking Earth Shatter carries the ult fight. It's like a support ult's worth of value. I can't stress enough, almost nothing you do in the rest of the game matters if you don't block Shatter. Failing to do so loses games, just straight up. The first important tip is not to fire strike. Can't put up your shield fast enough, so if the enemy Ryan has shatter what you want to do is just not use it ever the damage isn't worth it instead you want to be bullying the enemy Ryan with hammer swings and when you see him drop his shield and start the animation by putting the hammer over his shoulder whip up your shield immediately this is the most reliable way to block shatter but also you'll notice it's very important that you sneak in your shield jump when required because if the enemy Ryan jumps towards you or has a speed boost it's possible for him to get past your shield and shatter your team so for example here when Muma sees J-Mac swinging and barreling towards him to prevent this Earth Shatter from diving past his shield, he needs to shield jump backwards to regain control of the brawl and get his shield in the right place so the Shatter can't connect. You can see J-Mac do this here, where the enemy Ryan is getting past where his shield would be, so he jumps backwards to lay the shield down, but regains control of keeping his shield parallel with the enemy Ryan's. Then he can go back to smacking him and then animation canceling the shield to block the shatter when it does come out. There's a lot of tricks you can do with this. I like to faint as if I'm distracted by something behind us, revealing my back to the enemy Reinhardt just to quickly whip around with a 180 to block shatter when it comes out. Another thing to keep in mind is that when the enemy has shatter and they're stuck in a grav, panic shattering out of it is a go-to move, especially if you're frantically chasing after it to follow up on the damage. So keep in mind to hold shield firm up against the Rhine in close range and try to set up for a pin at kissing distance, which once you 
press that charge, he won't have time to react with Shatter by that point. He would have needed to predict it, sneaking in at that point. And this exchange is the biggest swing in a Rhine matchup. Blocking the enemy Shatter and hitting your own carries like few characters even have the potential to. Now, okay, the fun part, landing your own Shatters. There's a lot of ways to set this up. You can go aggressive using speed boost or bubbles to push deeper than the enemy Rhine expects you to go. But if they don't parry back in time, you can land it that way. You can pop out of spots they don't expect you to be. Of course, this is the classic hiding around a corner. Not a big fan of that one. Better to learn how to manhandle the enemy run in the brawl in my opinion but that can work too if they don't check their corners another major time that you will find value with shatter is sneaking it in to small gaps this feels really risky and a lot of times you will just flat out send it into a shield and not get anything but I stress that you really want to try to test yourself and your reaction speed. And don't worry that sometimes you'll waste your shatter because the times where you are able to thread the needle, just seeing a character not paying close enough attention or timing it exactly when the shield turns just a little bit will carry the entire team fight will be worth it considering it's a very fast charging ultimate anyway, sort of like Tracer's Pulse Bomb. You want to try to go for the high impact plays. But also, don't be afraid of low-impact shatters either. Just solo shattering a key target. One of my favorites is Zarya's, who always try to go a little bit too far from the team. Assuming you'll have the damage yourself or your teammates around you to focus that isolated target or two, small shatters are big plays. Doesn't have to be a team wipe every time, but the other ways you can set shatter up is either by pressuring the Rhine Shield enough so that it's breaking. Remember, shatter does 75 damage, so if the shatter breaks, the shield it will continue past it and hammer everybody down or you can combine with ultimates or other abilities like stuns with McCree putting his flashbang over the shield you can count down with a teammate three two one go hit them both at the same time or pairing with a zoning ultimate remember you don't always have to be the one to follow up on the shatter it's more important for you to keep your life most times and have your teammates help you get the eliminations except in super specific circumstances like a nano blade or an EMP maybe that's the enemy's only win condition but beyond that don't overextend to try to secure your shatter kills your life is more important i want to talk about some more advanced usage of your barrier and overall brawl control the first part is a bit more mechanical and it's outplaying enemies cooldowns by shield canceling to deny them the ability to shut you down with stuns, sleeps, nades, things like that. Mano on the NYXL is famous for being a very stable tank and weaving in shields in his brawl is key to denying Repel's ability to land the sleep on him here. By the time he's even in his face, presenting a sleep opportunity, the shield comes up to block it. And we see this again, even when the enemy is completely isolated, there's a lot going on here. He sneaks in the hammer swing, but blocks the nade, because it's more important to block that than to boneheadedly continue to swing. And during which time he's extending his hammer out deeper, controlling that swing arc to do more damage to the rest of the fight and just get more value out of his swings. And look at this from Repel's point of view. Blocks nade, dodges sleep. Repel has nothing to do because the right mechanics were too strong but beyond brawling with your shield you also want to be dynamically repositioning how and where you control the brawl and this honestly could be its own video or video series but here we see Mano setting the front of the engagement and not letting his teammates wind up on the front line getting bashed in by the enemy Ryan he needs to peel back when the cooldowns are going to wreck him or he's losing shield, but he also gets in front of his team when he needs to as well. And that moment to moment decision making is incredibly complicated, but a good example of it is this clip where on defense in a stall scenario, he doesn't have his Ana and his job is to contest the cart without overextending his face. Doesn't have enough heals to go deep. So he tries to help follow up on the blizzard, but immediately returns to securing the respawns for his team, shield dancing and buying his time long enough for his Anik to come back, get the nano boost on him, and that completely swings the fight back. I think it's the reading of the resource exchanges in real time at the speed required to make good decisions is what a lot of tank players struggle with. If you ever catch yourself saying, where was 
my team. Well, that's your job to know where they are and to know the state of the battlefield, even as the complex Overwatch interactions are going back and forth. So here on this Volskaya clip, my shield's low, they're zoning me out, I'm antied, I have to regen my shield, but my Lucio gives me sound barrier, so I go aggressive, try to isolate the D.Va with the shatter. I'm not gonna get the kill and I'm getting low, so I peel back to shield the bomb to secure us there. I get nanoed, so I try to go aggressive again, and you can see this ebb and flow, right? I wanna isolate the healer, try to get a kill on the Lucio, the D.Va peels, recognizing I'm in a 2v1, it's time to shield before I die, and it's this moment to moment, testing your limits and then backing off when you realize it's too much for you to handle, that's all the difference. This retake on Havana, getting through a doorway 1v2 is tough, but the shield jump backwards allows me to dodge most of the micro missiles and the Doomfist dive to just barely get through the doorway, land a pin and an earth shatter to help the retake, turning a point that looked like we were going to lose for sure into clutchable. Here we're brawling on a corner and being on the defensive puts me at an advantage here. Going deeper onto their side means it's easier for all of them to follow up. So I don't really want to go aggress into their cooldowns, especially since they land the anti on me anyway, but I also want to touch cart to stop it from moving and and sneak in damage where I can. And you see, as soon as I make the mistake of going too far on the enemy's side, I get pinned. Old man reaction times didn't hit the counter pin. It's very important that you use your shield as equally as important as your hammer when you're considering brawl mechanics. You can see the big difference of how much space my team has when I'm getting in the enemy Roadhog's face and watching his animations to swing when he's reloading or taking a breather and to whip up shield to block his hooks or damage, meaning that I'm always in control of this brawl. They have to constantly retreat and they just simply can't find any damage. There's just a big shield in the face of everything that can do damage and they're constantly losing ground. Now in the previous version of Reinhardt in Rhine 1.0, this guide would probably have a big section about shield management, which don't get me wrong, shield management is important. It's just that the rules of when you should shield are so much clearer now in my opinion that it's quite simply, are you pushing? Are you retreating? If not, don't waste your shield. The old barrier that had more health when you were slower had a bit more balance to how much poke you could take, but now your shield is a bit more about brawl control, and if you find yourself in a situation where you're struggling to manage it, you've basically already lost. The new Rhine requires you to use cover in between the time fights are actually committed. Point C on Havana is great to explain this, because what's my objective as a tank here? Just to gum up the works and keep them in this choke. So the more time I can just use the cover of the cart, to hold it in place without shielding, the better. In between which time I try to sneak in some hammer swings and threaten the enemy front line with pin, but if I ever feel that I'm about to be out of shield, I just need to get to the next bit of cover, hide and wait for it to regen. This JMAC clip is pretty hilarious on a number of accounts. Notice how he's able to survive on the enemy's side of the map just by aiming his shield well. He gets a bit of healing from mid as well, but it's this turn speed to whip the shield in front of the Mayfreeze, in front of the Diva's micro missiles that acts as his own personal personal cover while he's able to return back into the fight. Then when the fight's back on, it's brawl time. When you're swinging, the shield's recharging, but keep in mind, it's gotta be down for an extended period of time to actually get health back. So that either means it needs to be hide time or brawl time when your barrier health needs to regen. And one last shield clip for you. One key attribute of Rhine 2.0 is the faster move speed while shielding. This allows you to completely style on maze that are trying to run you over. Look at J-Mac just clown on Yaki here. Backpedaling and jumping away from the freeze keeps him alive long enough for the stall to come through. You love to see it. Keep in mind that's going to be key against any close range character like Reaper or or even Tracer as well. Use your speed, backpedal, put the shield in front of the damage, blocking it in time with their shots to minimize the damage to your face and neutralize the enemy DPS. Now, as I said, brawl control is more important than shield management in this new era of Rhine. So in that, I wanted to put a little section about picking fights and target priority in the brawl. Here's a hectic team fight where my team decides it's time to flank. I see a lot of times in ranked VODs that players get scared to commit with their teammates, ignore Ignoring the fact that if one or two of your teammates decide to go fight on their own and you don't, you just allow them to make the decision that that team fights over without you contributing. So for better or for worse, you see your team diving in, it's time to go. And another rule of thumb for you, when you're
you're inside the brawl, don't get sidetracked into far away targets. Ryan's got steadfast. He can't be moved. His hammer swing damage is incredible. When you're brawling and focus firing, a golden rule is to stay tight to the team fight. Yes, I see the Ana on the far right staircase and maybe I could go get her. But doing so might get me slept out of the play or with an opportunity to shield something important on the front line. Meanwhile, my Ana hits an anti on the brawl anyway. And if I'm off taking a solo duel, I can't contribute to the main brawl. Just try to get hammer swings on whatever you can. Building up to Earth Shatter, it's not necessarily your job to finish off kills that are running away. You're not fast enough to do that. You don't always get to confirm eliminations, but you do get to rack up a ton of damage and you've got one of the best ults in the game. And after all the shield nerfs, arguably the best barrier too. So keep that in the heart of the team fight, even as things get crazy and run away from you. Massive tip to keep your uptime high, track the damage you take, and keep an eye on your health at all times and what resources you have to work with. This sped up version of Ryan rewards reaction time and requires you to do some very fast calculus to constantly reevaluate the state of the fight and the resources in play. But it's good to remember that Ryan doesn't like to be surrounded and would rather fight in close quarters on a corner if possible now for the final clip of today's video we're going to quick play which i love for guide content because it pairs me with and against players of all ranking and you can see me incorporate everything we've talked about today starting with waiting for my team to actually be together before i go in by myself framing a pin and controlling the brawl to really box the enemy in and deny how much space they have this clip is cool as well because i'm playing with teammate hero picks that provide me less resources batiste and brigida neither have that big bailout to help ryan and we have a roadhog who we essentially have to treat as another dps that we're supporting so with a team comp like this i have to play much more disciplined and accurate with everything i do and when you don't have the likes of nano boost or bubble you're less of the star so your play needs to be more about setting up ways for your team to use their abilities rather than you pressuring forward to do it yourself the enemy do bank a bunch of volts and get a retake, but controlling the brawl, staying in the front of the engagement is going to guarantee that we secure a clean team fight retake. Yes, we get a pick, but it's important to remember as Ryan that you need to be the one keeping your team alive. You're the one who needs to be actively involved in the right fights all the time. So if you ever feel like you're not sure what you're supposed to be doing, well, probably a good time for VOD review because it should be something. You should have intention with everything you do, whether it's zoning out the enemy damage or or making space for your own where i think about pushing cart but my team wants to be fighting in the vault so i need to be fighting in the vault if you learn nothing else from today's video just getting your shield and your value into the fight even if you struggle with the other mechanics of reinhardt at least will get your tank where they need to be as a main tank in overwatch you want to be involved with every team fight in some way so stay active stay hungry and tape down the charge button just pin at every opportunity ignore what i said earlier if you've made it this far in the video you're allowed to pin constantly off the map deep to the enemy team who cares okay i'm just kidding forgive me just a little joke here at the end of the video if you enjoyed the vid please be sure to leave it a like it really does help us out let us know that you're enjoying the content this video took a super long amount of time to produce so please leave the video a rating to support that you enjoy this type of content being made and if you did enjoy it why not subscribe hit the subscribe button and the bell to actually get notified and linked in the description is our twitter where you can follow us where we tweet out news and have discussions about the state of the game otherwise that's been it for me i've been frito for your overwatch we'll see you guys next time i set up the boot for your boot look at my body look at that go why do you always say you're bad in your videos just like oh no, that good boosted by the oh, come on bro you're, you're not bad though eh. i carried